This is Alice. I'm of the stars and I had a, a few clarifying comments to make on the collective unconscious mind of humanity or what I used to call the unconscious thought cloud of the world. One difficulty in analyzing astral stories that are taking place in people's unconscious or subconscious minds is that at that level of awareness, in those deep levels of awareness, or I should say unawareness perhaps, people don't relate to themselves as personality. Uh, they don't know the difference between their personality and that of someone else. So they can very easily slip into the persona of another human being and into imagining that they are that and not really know the difference. And also, what at a higher level of awareness would be known as different personalities can blend together in the subconscious and unconscious thought streams in such a way that they don't really distinguish between each other. Another characteristic of the subconscious and unconscious planes is the use of uh, the objective case of pronouns for people of other genders, like uh, I might hear her said this or him said that. Mostly I hear her said this or her did that or like that referring to me. As if uh, we, the consciousness has receded to um, a time of infancy when the personal pronouns were not yet mastered. Interesting, huh? Another um, idiosyncrasy of the unconscious thought cloud of the world right now, as far as men is concerned, has to do with the use of the word Rotterdam as a childish substitute for a curse. And the interesting history of this word uh, is that one of the very first people to rise on this wave of consciousness to awareness was very precocious. And, and he found out about that word and used it as a way to, to escape from his parents' uh, admonition that he should never uh, use a curse word. And so instead of using a curse word, he used the word Rotterdam. And there's something uh, that I need to explain about that word Rotterdam. Uh, it has a dark energy meaning, and that meaning is uh, it is kill, kill the mother. Dam is a female horse. So the first thing is and at the very deep unconscious level it reduces women to animal, to the animal nature and, um, and adds to that the significance of dam, D-A-M-N. So there you have dam the women who are only animals. And the rotter is adds to the emphasis to that. It means it means rot them or uh, rot their bodies, rot them, kill them, and damn them to hell. And so it has a very unfortunate uh, dark meaning to it. Now, uh, this is a, a very a, a socially unacceptable feeling that is expressed by this, this, in this hidden way by this word Rotterdam, which interestingly enough comes up in an unconscious flow of thought of this person almost with every sentence, uh, as if it were a, a, a fondness that the person has for that word. And just reading into that a lesson for all humankind as we all become more clear, more clairvoyant and more clairaudient, uh, when we hear this word, some word with great symbolic import, 
repeated over and over again, we can be sure that it's, it's, it's coming up like that so that it will come to the attention of the, of the personality, the ego involved, and so that it can clear the soul wounding that has taken place. Um, in this case, a soul wounding happened when the child was very, very young, too young to be able to deal with it. And it involved uh, um, the child's mother. And so uh, it, the child had no one to depend on after that to talk to about this, you know. So, so this word Rotterdam, in this instance, it has to do with... Um, it has to do with the lack of motherly love to see the child through, uh, consistently through this great incident of soul wounding in early youth. And I'm sure that was not intended by that young person, but, you know, that just needs to be replaced with something more, um, more positive energy right now. Because what has happened is that this one of these first people to rise up um, had a f like a, fo a following of energy, a glom effect that uh, was humongous, and that in 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 encompasses in more and more people um, who are men every day as they rise up to consciousness, and they are all using that word. So it just happens uh, for this wave of ascension that that word is is indicates that a person is still. In a, or in an unconscious uh, like state of awareness or has temporarily sunk down to an unconscious state of awareness. So if you're listening, if you're clairaudient, that's a clue to you uh, that you're encountering the unconscious thought cloud of the world. And so at that level of awareness, an astral story may be taking a place in the, in, and in the name of a particular person. A person may call himself by a particular name and not actually be that person. That person may be someone that the higher consciousness of that speaking voice um, admires or dislikes or mostly admires uh, or pals around with. So I may form an opinion in my conscious mind that this person is who he says he is, but quite, quite likely and very often it's not the case, you know. It's just a, kind of a murky, confusing situation down there. I've seen an artist depict the unconscious realm as um, facial features of people uh, distorted and merging with the facial features of other people. And that's kind of the way I hear it, too. The way that I hear it uh, on the astral plane is the way that some artists depict it. Interesting. Huh. The collective unconscious, or what I used to call the unconscious thought cloud of the world, it's all like mergy and un i e and and it tends to take uh, all say all male people on earth as one person a lot of a lot of unconscious male voices may be glomming together, but each of those voices believes that it is the only one talking uh, it is the I and the only I in the whole universe that is male you know and it may hear a female voice or many female voices glomming and talking back and yet and call it her you know her her is talking like that <laughs> but but you know that's how it is down there and um, and yet uh, that her may think she is the only person talking that is female and yet be glomming with with gazillion other female voices at that level. In the next blog I'm going to be talking some about um, one of the daydreams that that the masculine uh, unconscious thought cloud of the world has been falling into. And uh, I'd like to say before that 
that my job that I see as an ascending person, when when I sense these these contrapuntal arguments, as it were, from my that snag my own unconscious mind, the the notion that, for instance, that that someone some, some that a man is pursuing me with violent fantasies and possible violent intentions um, which gloms together and becomes quite a quite a stream of, of energy especially in the big cities right but out here in the country is pretty easy to deal with um, because if there are less people per square inch in the newer sphere it, energy is thinner right or so I surmise. <laughs> but anyway, my job as a person that's, that's becoming uh, more aware, more rising in consciousness and in light, my job when these, these, these newospheric stories start that have to do with the deep, deep unconscious mind of other people, my job is to rise above them and to become very aware of them and to be neutral about them. So at first, especially if it has to do with primal drives such as fear of death and uh, sexuality, will to power in the world, uh, when it has to do with these things and maybe all of them all together represent a sexual fantasy of violence which has been occurring off and on in my newospheric uh, lower, lower energy areas, uh, the first thing to do is to know that they're happening and to, and to bring the ego into it, to know that I, the ego, am something different from, from that undercurrent of energy that I'm sensing. Someone else is attacking energy, attacking perhaps as, as consideration that, that they are the only ego in the world and that they are the only ego that, that deserves to be in the world because we do have an unconscious level of awareness that is just that, okay? My job is to rise into an understanding of individuation, individual ego, even though my primal drives are under threat of attack, right? And then to divorce myself from the astral energy that is happening and to become one with other energies that are peaceful in my environment such as my electromagnetic field or concentrate on kinesthetic awareness or concentrate on sounds around me or become one with the sunlight which is a wonderful feeling. So. And in that way, my attention is entrained away from the unconscious thought cloud of the world and into my own physical process and my, my awareness in the third dimension. If I were a man who were working on the masculine wound, I would be rising to awareness right now of the primal drive to rape and kill and to uh, take over the world, you know, those primal drives that are more masculine in nature. And I would be striving mightily to individuate my own awareness from the, the, that stream of, of primal energy in the world today. And so that's my clue regarding a possible uh, uh, mission for men right now in clearing the masculine wound is to individuate and to separate and to become the neutral mind and the peaceful mind and to allow these energies that flow through the first three chakras, the lower chakras of all men on earth to, to simply flow and to be without um, identifying with them, without objecting to them, just to simply to be at ease with the energetic of the uh, masculine wound that, that you're now rising to awareness to sense.